08 Mazda 5 rear brake change. Take the tire off, obviously. Take the first jacket up. Jack stand for protection. <laughs> yeah, we've got uh, two things back here. We got the cable for the e brake. Of course, the hose. Need a 14 millimeter socket. Right there. And down here. Don't worry about these two. They've got an Allen wrench in them, but they're just a pin that it slides on. You don't need to take those apart at all. So we'll be back in a moment. All right, with the bolts loose, the caliper should just slide right off. But if it doesn't, you may find that your rotor has a little ridge right there. And your pistons are compressed just enough that it's locked into place. So, you'll probably need a persuader of some sort. A bar or lever. Or you could even use the hook from the jack handle. I found that kind of handy. Just kind of slide it in here and lift up on it. You'll have to do it from both sides until you wiggle that sucker off of there. All right. With that off. Yeah, my pads are a little thin. They're not too bad though. But you can see the brand new ones. All right, so I need to take this off. It just pops out of there on both sides. Spring to help keep the two pieces aligned properly. So pop that loose with a small screwdriver or something. You can take the calipers out or the, the pads all right with the pads out you can remove the mounting bracket if you want but just slide apart right here it's got an allen wrench for the end but there's no need to take those out so i wouldn't even worry about it now the trick is compressing the piston this is one of those push and turn kind. You have to have a special tool to go down into those two pins. I picked up this tool from O'Reilly's. It didn't work. It's supposed to be a half inch drive, which that part is fine. But it's all got these little numbers on all of them to fit different pistons. But none of them are spaced properly. They're all too big. In the end, I just ended up using a bar and needle nose pliers. I had plans of making my own tool, but why bother? See, the idea is to put your needle nose pliers in here and turn. And you just turn, turn clockwise. But you have to put pressure on it. And like this, you don't get any pressure. So I found that I had to wedge the caliper against the hub. I take the rotor off here in just a moment. I gotta change them anyway. And a pry bar. And with enough effort and leverage, I was able to get that to compress. All right, hold your caliper up out of the way with a bungee cord or something. And to get your caliper off, you may have to use a persuader. It's on there too tight. Since I'm going to replace it, I'm just going to use a regular hammer. I found the other side was stuck on because of the rust. So you just have to work at it until you get it off. You may want to use a rubber mallet or a block of wood or something if you plan on reusing the rotor. You don't want to damage it. All right, there we go. Now, show you how I get that compressed. All right, here's my setup. Got my long bar resting on the concrete for leverage, and the other end on the piston. Got the whole setup resting on top of the rotor, on top of the hub. I just use my needle nose pliers, pressure with one hand, turn with the other, and it'll start compressing that. Even 
can see right about that halfway mark is where I'm sitting. It's got to go all the way to the bottom of that hole. All right, that took a little bit of effort, but once I got it started, it threaded down fairly easy just to push and turn, like I said, with some needle nose pliers, did the trick after I got the initial pressure with that bar. See how much lower it is. Now we got to put the bracket back in, the mounting bracket. And put the new rotor on, held it in place on the bottom with one lug nut just to keep it from kicking out. Obviously, that's going to get the wheel out. So, hang on. All right, with the bracket back in place, your piston should not stick out any wider. Right here. Oh, definitely not out to here, but it shouldn't protrude any farther than right here. Now we put the back pad in first, and then the front pad will discover the other side. And there we have it. You can see the one in the back has that spring. And that front does not. I also put that retention clip back in. And it's ready to slide on. So now, and there you have it. That single lug nut just keeps the rotor from wobbling around while you get your caliper set back in place. And take the lug nut off, put your wheel back on, drop down, go for a drive. Remember to tap your brakes a couple of times before you go too fast. You want to make sure that your caliper is working. And one last thing, when you start, you may want to crack the cap on your brake fluid reservoir. Because when you compress that piston, it, the fluid's going to back back up into the reservoir. If there's any back pressure, it may cause a little grief as you try and do that. That's about it. Enjoy your Mazda 5s.